What's good, everybody? It's D Brown Shanghai. And in light of a few going events, the 2K servers have shat their pants once again. So 2K is currently on sale for $2.99 on PlayStation and Xbox. And that means people who haven't had the game can finally afford it. You know, they can go ahead and get it for real cheap. And that's so cheap that people who don't really even have a, a care for 2K or they're not 2K fans, they can buy the game too because, you know, what's $3? Now that influx of people alone could send 2K's fragile little servers into a frenzy. But on top of that, my team. So every time they drop content on my team, so many people come back to the game for packs and whatnot that it makes it damn near impossible to play. So recently my team had two days of back-to-back -back highly sought after content in packs. So basically that combined with all of the new people coming to 2K equals rep to the servers. Now it's no secret that the 2K servers are fragile and have been fragile, but some people may not know just how far back it goes. So today I just want to take a look back to see how far the servers have come since my earliest days of 2K, starting with the legendary NBA 2K10 diss song by the OG Chris Move. Now I know some of y'all remember the song, it's called Pre-Patch Memories. This whole song is just the NBA 2K10 diss with most of the bars being about how trash the servers was. And the original video was posted around the time of 2K10's release. And that means that it was 10 years ago. I'm exhausted, tired of leaving. When I'm in the middle of a season. Year after year, the online is never stable. Yeah. And don't tell me it's my connection cause I have cable I'll come live online, I get in with the first try Because you play so oh, 2K it takes me all day Imagine how bad 2K10 servers had to be for Chris Move to drop a diss song And in that diss song, shout out NBA Live We know what NBA Live 10 played like and I promise you, it was nothing shout out worthy. And 10 years later, we're still suffering from some of the same issues. If you played 2K9 and 2K10 or even the earlier ones, then you know it's nowhere near as, near as bad as it used to be. But here we are in 2019 and they still won't ramp up the servers. So just for fun, I'm gonna go down a list of some of my fondest memories with NBA 2K's incredible servers. Back in NBA 2K10 and 2K11, there was crew mode. Now, I'm not gonna explain what crew mode is because I feel like most of y'all know what crew mode is. If you don't, crew mode is basically pro-am. Now in 2K10 and 2K11, if you were not extremely patient, I'm not talking like, hey, just you know, just wait like, wait a minute, wait like 30 seconds, wait like a minute, it'll, it'll put us in the game. If you were not extremely patient, then it was impossible to find the game. I specifically remember being in ninth grade with me and my friends waiting to get in crew games. I would bring, I would have my laptop out as we were waiting to get into crew games and I would be watching videos like Chris Boo, Call of Duty videos, just hella videos. I would I would have enough time, I could squeeze in like two 10 minute videos, if not more, before we got put into a game and crew. And that's I'm not overselling it, I'm not being dramatic, I'm like, for real bro, the people who played 2K10 and 2K11, bag me up in the comments, please let them know how long it took to get into a crew game. And in past videos, I've talked about the online leagues that me and my friends used to do but a fun fact that I never really mentioned was that a part of the reason that I ever suggested we make any online leagues in the first place was because the Play Now Online was so garbage that the leagues were the most reliable way that we could play games because it was so few of us. And throughout the years, a lot of those problems have persisted, so I'm not going to sit here and just give y'all the D. Brown 2K complaint diary. Ooh, voice crack. We're going to act like that didn't even happen. I'm not going to just sit here and talk y'all air off about every issue that I've ever had with a 2K server. So instead, we're just gonna jump to NBA 2K17 where we can discuss one of my fondest memories and that is Park After Dark. Now, Park After Dark was advertised to be this super fun, you know, it was just a, a change of pace. It's nighttime, neon clothes. You got a live DJ who, if I, if I remember correctly, the first one was Future and it was playing like Future at the park and it was supposed to be like dunk contest, three point shootout. You can play games with your friends, but it tanked. I did not get to play not one Park After Dark game in the launch of Park After Dark. And if I remember correctly, it just, it, it never panned out. It was lagging the whole time. I couldn't get in a game. It kept kicking me out of the server. And it wasn't just a one-time thing. Park After Dark was like broken every time, at least to me. And I know it wasn't my internet because I was on a college campus 
And them boys, that upload and download speed is something serious. So now fast forward into 2K19. This year, I was in an online league with about 20 plus people, right? And when I tell you that these servers could not handle that many people in a fantasy draft at once, I mean that. It repeatedly kicked us out of the draft as the draft was happening. So you had to hope and pray that you could make it back into the draft before it got to your pick. And even when it got to your pick, you had to hope whoever you selected was actually who you got. I got to choose 10 of my players before everybody just agreed to sim the rest of it because none of us could get the players that we wanted. Now I picked 10 players before we decided to do that. And out of those 10 players, do you wanna know how many of those players that I chose ended up on my team? An astounding zero. Every time I picked a player, I would receive a randomly selected player by God knows who, and it wasn't the people who I picked. I ended up quitting the league because I felt like it would take up too much time. And on top of that, you know, I had a team full of niggas who I did not choose and I haven't played an online league since. So I'm gonna close this segment of the video out with a joke that I'm certain is nowhere near as funny as I think it is. 2K server issues are actually older than a large portion of the people who play their games. Now let that sink in. And for years and years, we've been begging them to fix the servers. I can guarantee you your favorite 2K YouTuber has spoken on it at least once. But instead of fixing their servers, 2K has been doing the best Helen Keller impersonation for the past 10 years that I've ever seen. So I've come up with a very specific scenario of what it would take to force 2K to man up and invest some of them millions into them servers. All right, so 2K servers would have to go down 2011 PSN style but instead of just on PSN, on all platforms. Cause if it's just on one platform, they're gonna ignore it and not even address it. Kinda like what they're doing right now with the servers. And it would have to be down for an extended amount of time because if it went down for like a week or so, they would just throw some VC at us, just give everybody like a little, a quick little 100, 100K VC or something to soothe out those wounds. If they did that, I mean, we know 2K, bro. They not, just, you know, they not just throwing out VC. I don't know what the fuck I'm thinking. But after an extended shutdown, the media would pick up the story, and the story would be how could such a profitable company have such fragile servers? And then when they see how bad that hits their pockets, which is the most important part of this scenario, you know, the monies, they'll have to do some reflecting. Then of course will come the community outrage. Everybody would be pissed. You throw in some threats from like the bigger 2K YouTubers that they will permanently stop playing the game if, unless they fix their servers or that they would like maybe even switch to NBA Live. And we could be looking at some major 2K changes here. But of course, this is all hypothetical. And I'm not saying that I want this to happen. I just think it would take a monumental happening of this sort to force them to wake up and fix the servers. Because even though we always complain about it and we let them know our issues, we continue to spend money on the game and so they don't care. They're gonna continue to rake in the millions and not fix the servers. So yeah, that's that's the scenario. That's all I got for you guys today, man. Hopefully they wake up and fix the servers or just, you know, just come to their senses. Fix the servers, all the money you make. How long have we been talking about this on YouTube, bro? So hopefully the servers pooping their pants like they're currently doing is a wake up call to 2K. Highly unlikely, but you know, you never know, you know? You know, you never know, you know? That's masterful use of the English language right there. My mom would be proud of my dumb ass. But that's all I got for y'all today, man. Let me know what y'all think down below in the comments. And as always, I'm D. Brown Shanghai, and I'm up out of here.